Live from Copenhagen, Denmark. It's the Cube covering KubeCon and Cloud Native Con Europe 2018. Brought to you by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and its ecosystem partners. Live in Copenhagen, Denmark of KubeCon 2018 Europe. I'm John Furrier with Lauren Cooney, my co-host. Exciting startup news here. Obviously, it's a growing ecosystem. All the big, big names are in it, but great ecosystem of startups. One launching here. We have Basam Chavara, who's the founder and CEO of Upbound here on theCUBE. Website's going to go live in a few hours. We're here for a quick preview. Thanks for joining theCUBE today. Appreciate oh, my it. My pleasure. So, you got a company. No one knows about it. <laughs> now they're going to hear about it. What are you guys doing? What is Upbound about? And um, what are you doing? So Upbound is going after the problem of multi-cloud. Um, so the way to think about it is that you know, we're seeing now the ubiquity of Kubernetes. And, and if you think about what Kubernetes has done, it has solved the problem of taking many machines and making them into one and doing all the scheduling and management and becoming the operating system of, of a cluster, right? Upbound is the next level up. Upbound is essentially taking multiple clusters and solving a similar set of problems around running distributed systems, distributed services, global services um, across clusters. Um, it was really interesting to hear CERN this morning uh, talking about how they're managing 210 clusters. Um, and you think about, you know, 210 clusters, if you were talking about 210 machines, you'd be like, well, that's a lot of machines, right? Um, this is 210 clusters. And so a similar set of problems exist at a higher level, and that's the, the focus of Upbound. So, you guys are announcing a financing, $9 million from uh, uh, investment, Series A financing, Google Ventures is the lead in a variety of, of industry, um, super um, reput reputable investors. What was the value proposition pitch? What, was, what got Google Ventures excited? What was the core value, technology, business model? Give us the, give us the deck. Um, I mean, so, so my understanding of their investment thesis, <laughs> uh, uh, and, and, and it's hard to claim that you always understand uh, this, but, but essentially the, you know, the next level of infrastructure problem is essentially around multi-cloud and enterprises are managing many clusters today, many different cloud environments, whether it's across regions of a public cloud vendor or it's across public cloud vendors or across hybrid boundaries, you know, on-premise versus private cloud versus public cloud. Um, it's become a it's become a, a challenge to to run things across clusters, and there's a lot of interesting scenarios to be solved at that level. Um, that was the the premise of. So, you are know, you guys investment. a management software piece? Are you guys um, technology? What's the product? We're essentially building a service that helps companies run across cloud environments, um, and it's based on Kubernetes because uh, Kubernetes is you know, an amazing platform to build on top of, and, and we've learned that through our investment in Rook, and uh, you know, it's a great extension point, and awesome community to be, to be working with, and so, so that's the, you know, that's the, we're offering a service for multi-cloud. Great, is it going to be, you know, is some shape of it going to be open source, or what are you looking at Yeah, obviously there will be parts of it that are open source. Um, we're a big open source company. Um, the team that's in Upbound is actually the team that's behind Rook, and Rook is a CNCF project now, and all open source, obviously. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we're we're, uh, we're definitely an Good. open source player. So you're exposed to the storage challenges with Rook and all the future kind of architecture. That's right. We just had Adrian Cockcroft on. We were both, you know, high-fiving each other and celebrating that microservices is going to be a modern yes. era. <laughs> Um, how do you guys solve that problem? What is, you know, what, is it going to be, the buyer going to be a cloud architect? Is it going to be a storage person? Is it an ops person? Who's the target buyer of your service? Or um, user of your service? Well, essentially people, DevOps people that are, you know, managing multiple clusters today, today and um, understand the challenges around, you know, managing multiple clusters, no normalization of policies, separate users, separate user management, um, observability, all those things come up with the strategies. And of course, let's not forget stateful workloads and managing state across environments is, I'd say probably one of the harder problems. Um, and um, so, you know, the buyer is, it's, a, it's essentially somebody in DevOps and then, you know, obviously a, a 
the uh, CTO, CIO yep. level gets involved uh, at some point, but but yeah. it's it's when you guys it's a were draw. when you guys were forming the company, obviously with the Rook project, you're exposed to some of the pain points. You mentioned a few of them. What was the one pain point that jumped out at you the most, and you said, "Dang, we could build a company around this." Um, the fact that most enterprises are now managing multiple cloud environments and they are completely independent. They're, you know, anything that they try to normalize or or do across them is uh, there's a human involved or there's uh, some you know, homegrown script involved uh, to actually run across clusters. And honestly, that's the same problem that people were trying to solve across machines, right? And that led to some the, the, you know, the work that's happening around orchestration, Kubernetes and others. Um, so it's only, it's only logical that we move up a level and, and solve a similar set of problems. Yeah, I have a question about your service, you know, right. just along the lines of there are a lot of people coming into this market with, you know, we've got this integration solution that is multi-cloud, or we have this, you know, kind of API platform that can solve for multi-cloud and run applications across, you know, multiple cloud platforms. Right. What is your differentiator? Yeah, so I mean, multi-cloud has become a, a thing now, as, mm -hmm. as, uh, as you've observed. Um, I think the power of what we're doing is that uh, we're building a control plane based on Kubernetes and the great work that's happening in the Kubernetes space around multi-cluster and federation and everything else, um, and offering a set of services that layer on top of that that solve some critical problems across clouds, um, including stateful workloads and migration portability across clouds, um, and essentially inherently building this on the Kubernetes platform and our experience with that and our experience with the community around Great, so, differentiate it. so that leads me to my next question. So your pricing model, you said that you were going to be open source. So is that control plane going to be open source and then some services are going to be bucketed yeah, into? Yeah, it's probably too early for us to charge. talk about the pricing okay. model, but, but you know, think of it as a service and a managed service for mm -hmm. multi Great. And so you can imagine that um, open source is actually quite compatible with a service play. Um, yes, so. it is. And $9 million, that's a good chunk of cash. Congratulations, use of funds. Obviously, hiring out of the gate. What's your priorities on the use of funds on the first round of funding? So we're going to accelerate hiring, we're going to accelerate delivering the service, um, and that's, you know, it's this is the fun part of a startup, as is my <laughs> second one, so uh, uh, it's it's the uh, next 18 months is all building and growing and yeah. doing product. And, and what's your five year pro forma revenue projection? <laughs> you made it up, uh, let, me, the VC. Let, me, let me pull up my spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> I love those VC slides. Yeah, we're making up year five. No, but you want to have some growth, so the, the trend is your friend. Here it's multi-cloud. That's right. Um, and obviously the growth of microservices, obviously, that's right. right. Uh, anything else out there that's on your mind, observationally, looking at the market? I mean, as you start, start coming, certainly you're doing a lot of due diligence on the market. Uh, what are your risk factors? How are you thinking about it? What are you looking at closely? How are you studying some of the trend I mean, data? I, I mean, at some level, you, you know, the way to think about this is, uh, you know, cloud native is still at its infancy, right? Um, despite all the amazing momentum that's building around it. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, at some level, the we use the term cloud native, but it's really just cloud computing. I mean, uh, that's, yeah, so, so uh, I, I think the adoption cycle is going to be interesting, so that's something that, that I think about a lot. Uh, you know, how long is, will people kind of make transform transformative changes to what they're doing? Um, but I, I, I believe the power of open source in the community is yeah. that that people are, you know, I mean, look at this conference. Uh, a yeah. lot of people are here, including. There's no doubt open source right. is a good bet. That's right. I, mean, I think the thing we're watching, I'd love to get your reaction to, and Lauren, you, you too, is that Stu Miniman, Michael, who's not, he's not here, he's uh, at the, the Dell EMC World event. We talk about this all the time around the, what's the migration going to look like from on-prem to cloud? And meaning, obviously on-prem is transforming to cloud ops. That's right. Right, so okay, perfect for your case, I think. What's the ratio, what's hybrid cloud going to look like when you have a true private cloud, true cloud environment on premise? Because this yeah. speaks to the multi-cloud trend because if I can have an on-premise operation, I can Very make- Very much. Well, you have to look at the applications too. I mean, that's, that's critical because you've got that's these right. monolithic applications that have to be you know, essentially changed and, right. and ported into different environments to become multi-cloud. There's, well, there's heavy lifting there. Yeah, I think the interesting thing about what you're describing here is that it used to be that, you know, if you were running on-premise, you're using a completely different stack from, say, when you're running, what you're running in the public cloud, right? And so, not only was the choice about where you're hosting your compute and your networking and storage, but it was also a choice of stacks, right? Your, you know, OpenStack or whatever you're, you're running on-premise, on and then there was, 
you know, Amazon or uh, others, right? Yeah. Um, what is happening now is that we're actually normalizing on stacks. So this whole movement around Kubernetes is essentially, you know, uh, uh, a way to say that there is now a common stack regardless of where you're actually being deployed, right? The story's not always there and that's, you know, but it'll get there, right? And yeah. so the, at some level it gives people more choices about where they want to host. And in fact, if, you know, Portability becomes more interesting because you could move out in and out of clouds, right? I mean, um, there are costs to doing that. There, data gravity is a thing. Um, but, but containers but are helpful. Containers Kubernetes. are helpful, uh, but you know that that um, Amazon truck goes in one direction, um, and so so uh, <laughs> it is it is interesting to think about that. But it, at least it becomes possible for yeah. people to think about how to manage their infrastructure and how to manage their services across clouds and. It, you know, the end results, they'll have more choices. Well, I think this community, you talked about on our intro today about portability is really what this community cares a lot about. Very uh, much. Choice and non-lock-in. Non it's amazing how many companies that we talk to that actually have a, like a strategy, you know, CTO, CIO level down around not getting locked into mm -hmm. any vendor, yet they are not able to fulfill yeah, that it's today. hard to talk about right. lock-in when you actually don't even know what cloud native is. So it's interesting right. discussion. And Adrian Cockcroft was just on from Amazon, that's right. and I uh, and and he was he and I were talking a bit with with Lauren about that's a developer it's a developer organization and management discussion. Yeah, first that's right. Mm -hmm. So if you can't, you don't know what it is. How do you know what? <laughs> well, there's the, the locking looks. Like. The you can't play chess if you don't know what checkmate looks like. Yeah, but the good news is that developers are, you know, kind of high up on that food chain now, and they're that's able right. to actually yeah. make these buy decisions. Right. So I think that's going to be yeah. critical. Uh, well, yeah. congratulations on the financing. Thank you. Um, love the company name, Upbound. Yes, Upbound. Essentially good. going above the clouds. Uh, above the clouds. Like it. Congratulations. Yeah. Looking forward to uh, tracking the progress. And great, great to have you on the cube. Nine million dollars in fresh financing. Upbound uh, just scored a great deal for multi-cloud. Again, that's a great trend, congratulations. Thank More you. CUBE coverage here in, in a moment. Thanks for watching, be right back, stay with us.